Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing super, super well. Welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna be talking about what happened to 20 year old Ana Fernanda Basaldua Ruiz. Now this case is very recent, so there isn't that much information out there. I will most likely have to make a part two video in the future just to give you guys more updates, but I definitely wanted to make the video now because Ana's family is asking for people to spread awareness. They're asking for help on this case and they just don't want the case to go cold or lose any type of momentum they have right now. So hopefully by making this video I can help spread the word and they do have a GoFundMe open right now so I did want to donate a portion of today's video towards the GoFundMe hopefully that can push the family a little bit closer to their goal so yeah that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about in today's video thank you guys so much for being here and for taking the time to listen to Anna's story I truly appreciate all the love and support that you guys show this channel you guys are literally the best familia ever anyways that's pretty much all I have to say enough chit chatter let's jump right into today's video Ana Fernanda Basaldua Ruiz was born on October 18th, 2002 in Michoacán, Mexico. She was born to her parents Alejandra Ruiz Zarco and Baldo Basaldua. She has a younger sister named Natalie and a brother who passed away a few years ago. She lived in Mexico with her mother and with her sister Natalie until she was almost 18 years old. Her father actually lived in Long Beach, California because her parents had separated and he remarried someone else and was now living in the United States. Ana decided that this is something that she also wanted to do. So in 2020, she packed up all of her belongings and she moved to Long Beach, California to live with her father. Anna was a beautiful, intelligent, funny, caring young woman who loved music. She loved to dance, she loved to read, and she just loved her family so much. Her mother says that Anna was just the kind of person that could win the hearts of everyone around her. She describes her daughter as bold, brave, and free. One of the main reasons that Anna wanted to move to the United States for was because she wanted to enlist in the military. She dreamed of making a successful career in the army and she wanted to serve her country proudly. So when she moved to Long Beach, California in 2020, she tried to enlist in the army, but since that was a time during the pandemic and you know everything was in lockdown, things were really delayed, so she wasn't able to fully enlist in the army until 2021. And she was sent to go live at the base in Fort Hood, Texas. Now when she originally told her family that she wanted to enlist in the army, not everyone was on board. Anna's grandmother, Maria, had some very strong feelings about Anna enrolling in the military. Maria told Telemundo that she spoke to her granddaughter and told her to not enroll in the army because she was worried of how she was going to be treated. You know, Anna was a Latina, she was young, she was a female, she was an immigrant, so the grandmother was just worried of what would happen to Anna. So she told Anna about this, but Anna told her, don't worry about it, like everything's going to be fine, like this is something that I really want to do. Of course, the grandmother wanted to be supportive so she gave Anna her blessing and she just hoped that everything would be okay. At the age of 20, Anna was an army private who served as a combat engineer with the 1st Cavalry Division in Fort Hood which is about 150 miles southwest of Dallas. She was at Fort Hood for about 15 months before her death. Now, when I first heard about the case and I heard the name Fort Hood, I thought to myself, that sounds very familiar. Like, where have I heard that before? And then that's when I realized that that is the same base that 20-year-old Vanessa Guillen was murdered in back in April of 2020. So yes, Anna was staying at the same military base that Vanessa was staying at when she was murdered. We will circle back on this later on in the video and we'll talk about the similarities between Anna's case and the similarities between what happened to Vanessa. Now, Anna being at Fort Hood isn't the only similarity that she has with Vanessa Guillen. If you recall from Vanessa's case, she had complained to her family, to her friends, and to her superiors that she was being sexually harassed by a sergeant at the base. Well, it turns out that Ana did the same thing. Ana's mother, Alejandra, told Telemundo that her daughter said that an army superior was harassing her and that she allegedly received sexual advances on the base. She specifically told her mother, quote, everyone wants me to sleep with them. Not only did 
Anna tell her family about this harassment, but she also told her friends. Two of Anna's friends have come forward and they also spoke to Telemundo about what Anna had told them. They said that yes, Anna did talk to them about the harassment from one of her sergeants. Allegedly, the sergeant yelled at Anna horribly in front of all the other soldiers without any reason. He would say things to her in front of other people that were really uncomfortable. He would tell her that she couldn't speak to anyone else besides him, that she couldn't trust anyone else besides him, and he would randomly show up to her room without any notice. Amigos de Ana Fernanda están incrédulos. Una de ellas, quien prefirió ocultar su identidad por temor a represalias, nos dijo que Ana Fernanda era víctima de acoso. Su sponsor, que era un sargento en, en el tiempo, um, estaba uh, haciendo sexual harassment. So, le estaba molestando, le decía que no se podía juntar con nadie más que no fuera él, que no confiara en, nada, en nadie más que no fuera él. His behavior was not appropriate, and at first, Ana was scared to come forward. She was worried they would get mad at her, or that they would remove her from the army, or that something worse would happen, but she thought to herself, no, like, this harassment needs to stop, and I need to tell someone. So, that's what she did. She reported this harassment to one of her superiors, and supposedly, they were going to remove the sergeant and they were going to move him to a different platoon. But instead of doing that, they actually transferred Anna to a different platoon. So yes, instead of punishing the sergeant for these allegations, instead of doing something to the sergeant, you know, show that they were taking Anna's claim seriously, they just decided to move her and just kind of hope that her complaints would stop. Which is literally just so disappointing because in 2020, Vanessa complained about these same things to her superiors and nothing was done about it. So the fact that another Latina female at this same same base is complaining about sexual harassment and once again nothing is being done is just so disappointing. After Anna's transfer to a different platoon, the sergeant was eventually moved to another base. He was moved just on regular orders, not because he was being punished for harassing Anna. Now even though the sergeant was moved to a different area and Anna was also in a different area, she told her friends and family that the harassment did not stop. She was telling her friends and family that she didn't know what else to do because she had already spoken to her superiors. She had already told the commander about this, and even with all of that, she was still going through a difficult time, and she just felt so lost. One of Ana's friends, who was actually a soldier at Fort Hood, spoke to Telemundo, and he asked to remain anonymous and for them not to identify him because he was worried of, you know, what the repercussions would be for speaking out about this, but he told Telemundo that in February, just a couple of weeks before Ana died, she had told him that another soldier on the base had tried to suffocate her. He specifically said that Anna was getting to know this person. I'm not really sure what that means. I don't know if that means she was becoming friends with this guy or what that entails, but this guy had choked Anna and Anna told him that she did not like that. That that behavior was wrong, but apparently this guy just laughed in Anna's face and tried to play it off as if it was a game or some type of joke. Anna tried to get away from this guy, but he would continue to bother her. He would continue to harass her, send her text messages, and he just wouldn't leave her alone. Again, this is all according to this anonymous friend. I'm not sure if Telemundo vetted this guy to, you know, confirm that he actually was a soldier at the base and was friends with Ana. I'm not sure who this guy is or what the situation is, but that is what he told Telemundo. One of the last conversations that Ana had with her mother Alejandra is just so heartbreaking. She told her mother that she was sad, that a lot of very tough things were happening to her, and that things were not as normal as she thought they would be. She told her mom that she couldn't tell her mother much, but that there would be a time where they could be reunited and Anna would finally be able to tell her in person what was actually happening. She told her mom that all she wanted was to leave, go back to Mexico, breathe some fresh air, and just hug her mother and be with her family. Anna and her mother had this conversation on March 8th and unfortunately, that would be the last time that Alejandra would ever speak to her daughter. On Saturday, March 11th, Anna texted her father and told him that she no longer felt comfortable, that she felt like her entire life was wrong and that she wanted to die. Baldo immediately replied to the messages, but he says that his messages were no longer going through. It showed that the messages were no longer delivering, so he decided to check Anna's location, and it showed that she was in a park inside the base, and that was it. The next day, on Sunday, March 12th, he was still not able to get in contact with his daughter. The entire day went by without any movement or without any responses from Anna. Then, on Monday, March 13th, Baldo 
received some devastating news about what happened to his daughter, Ana Fernanda. That day, Baldo was working his job at a local restaurant when at about 11 o'clock in the morning, military representatives arrived to the restaurant and asked to speak to Baldo. They pulled him over to the side and they told him that his daughter, Ana Fernanda, was dead. Baldo says that in that moment, his heart immediately dropped. He couldn't believe what these people were telling him and he just didn't understand how this was real life. This was just very earth-shattering news and Baldo just didn't know how to handle it. Now that the military representatives had told the father about Ana's death, it was now time to tell her mother Alejandra, who at this time was still back living in Mexico. Alejandra says that she received this phone call at around 1 p.m. on that Monday. She picked up the phone and it was a sergeant and the sergeant said that he was there with Ana's father. He told her that he was calling to offer his condolences in the death of her daughter Ana Fernanda. As soon as she heard that, Alejandra told him, stop, I don't want to hear this, don't talk anymore, and she just hung up the phone. This was just very shocking news, and both parents just didn't know what to do. Alejandra says that the first time she spoke on the phone with this military representative, who was named Patrick Sullivan, he told her that they first found Anna passed out on the ground and that they rushed her to the doctors, but at that point, there was nothing that anyone could do, and Anna was declared dead. After speaking to Patrick several more times, he told the family that Anna's body was actually discovered near a maintenance bay on the premises and that when they found her, she had a noose around her neck. Because of this news, the military believes that Anna died by her own hand. As soon as Alejandra heard that these people were saying that Anna committed suicide, she immediately knew that they were wrong. She says that there's no way her daughter would do this to herself or to the family. No se vale, no se vale. Su mamá rechaza la versión del suicidio como la causa del fallecimiento de su hija. Nos informaron, mejor dicho, que Ana Fernanda se horcó. La verdad es que para mí esto no, no lo concibo porque Ana Fernanda es una persona valiente, Ana Fernanda es una persona capaz, inteligente. I'm not sure if it was the day after they informed the family about Ana's death or if it was a few days later, but Ford Hood did come out with a statement talking about Ana's death. They specifically said, sadly, the first Calvary Division lost trooper Ana Basaldua Ruiz, a combat engineer who served in the division for the past 15 months. The Army Criminal Investigation Division and the chain of command are actively investigating the facts and circumstances surrounding her death. The chain of command is in contact with her family to keep them up updated. In addition, they are providing support and resources to the family and troopers who served with her. Now, Ana's family believes that she did not take her own life. Her mother, Alejandra, said that her daughter was brave, strong, and she just would never do this to her family. Her friends have also come forward and they said, yes, Ana was going through a difficult time because of the harassment, but she would never do this. Descarta también el suicidio. Yo conozco a Baza, yo sé que a lo mejor estaba pasando por un mal momento, pero no lo suficiente para que ella misma se cometiera suicidio. She told multiple friends that she was not going to renew her contract with the military in August and that as soon as her contract ended, she was going to move back to Long Beach, California to live with her father and just have a fresh start. She was ready to end things on good terms with the base and she was so excited about this new chapter in California. Anna had even made plans to take some time off in March to go visit her friends in Long Beach, California. She told her friend that she had bought her flight for March 31st and that she was so excited decided to go to California and see her friends and, you know, just kind of take a break from everything. Because of this, Anna's friends and family just find it hard to believe that she would take her own life when she was, you know, so excited about all these future plans. What was really frustrating for the family is that they never received any specific details of how Anna was found, who found her, what they found near her. I mean, they just had so many unanswered questions and they felt like the military wasn't thoroughly communicating with them. Alejandra feels like her daughter's death is a cover-up. One of Anna's aunts took to Twitter and said, Yesterday, my niece was found dead at Fort Hood. We don't have any information on what happened to her. We are devastated, please. If someone can help, please help us. Now let's talk about what Fort Hood has to say about what happened to Ana Fernanda. On Thursday, March 16th, the base came out with a statement and said that no foul play is evident in the death of Ana, but that an investigation is ongoing. The Army's Criminal Investigation Division, also known as CIA, 
AID, is gathering evidence and looking into the claims of sexual harassment that Anna told her mother and to her friends. The military is claiming that no foul play is evident in the case, but the family just feels like something is still missing. For example, Anna's father, Baldo, asked the military representatives if there was any type of evidence or, you know, any proof to show what actually happened to Anna. Maybe there's a witness that heard or saw it or there's cameras, you know. He was just asking for any type of proof, but the military representative said no. There were no witnesses and there were no cameras that captured what happened to Anna. Now, when Baldo heard this, he was a little bit confused because, you know, this is a big military base, so he doesn't understand how there aren't cameras in every single corner and, you know, there's so many people at this base, so he doesn't get how no one saw or heard anything. Le pregunté que si había cámaras en el lugar, me dijeron que no había cámaras en el lugar. Este, le dije, pero aparte de eso, hay muchísima gente ahí. O sea, ¿cómo le van a encontrar hasta el día siguiente? Now, according to Sean Timmons, who is a former Judge Advocate General at Fort Hood, he came out and he told Military.com in an interview that he has first-hand experience in seeing military-based leadership dodge responsibility for incompetence. He specifically said that the culture at Fort Hood has been, for the last 25 years, a culture where the command feels immune from culpability, immune from oversight, and immune from liability because they operate thousands of miles away from the Pentagon in a part of Texas where the local culture is very pro-military. So he said that nobody second guesses what they do and that they just feel like they're above the law. According to Vanity Fair, there were 39 deaths in Fort Hood in 2020, five of which included murder, 13 suicides, and 11 unresolved cases. Now, investigations into these deaths are still ongoing today in 2023. So as you can see, this base is very suspicious and a lot of people are not a fan of Fort Hood. What happened to Ana Fernanda reminds a lot of people of what happened to Vanessa Guillen back in 2020. If you guys aren't familiar with Vanessa Guillen, she was a 20-year-old soldier at Fort Hood, the same base that Ana was at, who was murdered in April of 2020. What happened to Vanessa caused a national outcry and it exposed the systematic problems of sexual assault at the base. Just like Anna, Vanessa had also complained of sexual harassment by her superior, Aaron Robinson, who actually killed himself as police moved in on him to arrest him for the murder of Vanessa Guillen. In 2021, state and federal lawmakers passed the I Am Vanessa Guillen Law, sponsored by Representative Sylvia Garcia. Now, this law strips authority from commanders and it gives survivors more options to report any type of abuse. So we have Vanessa Guillen, who is a young 20-year-old Latina female living in Fort Hood that is complaining about sexual harassment from one of her superiors. She tells her family about this abuse and then she ends up getting murdered by her sergeant. Then we have Ana Fernanda, a 20-year-old young Latina female also living at Fort Hood, also complaining to her family and to her superiors about sexual harassment. She goes to her superiors and she lets them know about this harassment and then she ends up dead. Now again, they're claiming that Ana took her own life, but a lot of people People just feel like there are so many similarities between Vanessa and Anna and that what happened to Anna needs to be further investigated. Now, when all of this about Anna came out, Vanessa's sister, Myra, actually got involved. She made a statement on Twitter that said, I'm aware of the death of Anna Basaldua in Fort Hood, Texas. I will be speaking to the family soon. I find it very sensitive to speak on something that I'm not fully aware of yet. And this is also very triggering for me. I need to gather my thoughts and then I'll be able to share them. I'm sure it's so difficult for Myra to hear this because it brings her back so many memories of what happened to her sister. I was watching an interview that Myra did and she was saying that after the death of her sister Vanessa, she felt like they were making so much progress with the military because, you know, they enacted the new law and you know, they were taking what happened to Vanessa seriously. So she felt like they were getting somewhere and then all of a sudden the news comes out about another young Latina female soldier dying at Fort Hood, the same base her sister died at. So she felt like this was very triggering and she also just felt very disappointed in the military. She hopes that the military will take this seriously and that they will conduct a thorough investigation into what happened to Anna. It's a shame that the little bit of trust that we were building within, you know, with the military, uh, with working together with them to get legislation passed was already uh, broken once again. It's very triggering. I mean, it reminds me of my sister's case and until they come out with the official investigations as to if it was sexual harassment sexual assault, then we won't know um, any more details until they provide, Fort Hood provides them. The fact that uh, the commander came out and spoke and, you know, uh, gave importance to the issue 
is also good. Um, I just hope that they completely do everything right the whole way, not just in, in the beginning to calm everybody down and be like, okay, we're looking into it. Despite all of this, the base continues to say that there is no foul play involved in Anna's death and that they truly believe that she took her own life. They also tried to make it clear to the public that they do not tolerate harassment of any type. Lieutenant Sean Burnaby came out and said, harassment of any type is contrary to army values. Harassment destroys the cohesion of our team and it erodes our readiness. Harassment is unacceptable. We do not tolerate tolerate harassment. They say that now, but when Vanessa complained about this back in 2020, nothing was done about it. So it's hard to believe them when they say that they do not tolerate harassment when Anna literally came forward to her superiors, told them that she was being harassed, and yet nothing was done. The news of what happened to Anna Fernanda got so big that the League of United Latin American Citizens, also known as LULAC, spoke out on March 9th and demanded that the FBI get involved. They said, we have already informed the army that Lulac is demanding action and will not stand down until all the truth emerges about what happened. Also, we are asking the FBI to conduct an outside investigation into the case, independent of the U.S. Army. For the army to say no foul play presumes facts that have not been yet brought forth. For the army to say no foul play would also indicate a tone deafness to the concerns of the father and the mother of Ana Fernanda Basaldua Ruiz, who stated that she had been the target of alleged sexual harassment. Harassment. On March 17th, the LULAC sent a formal written letter to the FBI asking them to investigate what happened to Ana Fernanda. It's really amazing that this organization has come together to provide support to Ana's family because I'm sure at the start they felt so alone. Just imagine being in Mexico and learning that your daughter died in the United States and that there's really not much that you can do all the way from Mexico. I'm sure the family just felt very alone at the start, but thankfully now they have so much support from LULAC. They have support from the Hispanic community. They have the support from Vanessa's family. Right now, everyone is just hoping that Anna does receive justice and that whatever answers the family is looking for, they receive. Now, as far as Anna's funeral, the family has plans of hosting a funeral and a memorial in Long Beach, California, and afterwards transporting her body back to Mexico where they can lay her to rest with the rest of her family. Since Anna's mother and her sister lived in Mexico, the family did create a GoFundMe as a way to help pay for their transportation and travel travel expenses to the United States. That way they can be reunited with Anna's father, they can attend the memorial, and they can just give Anna their final goodbye. Part of this money will also be going towards conducting a second autopsy for Anna because they already asked the coroner's office in the US to do it, but they were told that if they wanted to do a second autopsy, they had to pay for it themselves. Now as for the autopsy, I wasn't able to find too much information about that. I did see a statement from Baldo a few weeks ago and he said that they were very going to do the autopsy within the following week. So I'm not sure if they actually went through with that and if the family has those results yet and they just haven't been made public yet. As I mentioned before, the family does not believe that Anna took her own life. So they really want to conduct the second autopsy, you know, just to get their own results and see what actually happened. I believe right now the GoFundMe is at $8,000 and their goal is to reach $15,000. So like I mentioned at the start of the video, I will be donating a portion of today's video towards the GoFundMe. I'll also be making my own personal donation. So hopefully we can, you know, help the GoFundMe continue to raise money and get the family closer to their goal. It would be amazing if you guys were able to also make a donation to help Anna's family. But if you're not able to, that is completely okay. You can help by sharing Anna's case, spreading the word, and just keeping the momentum going. I did read an article on March 23rd that said Alejandra and Natalie were currently waiting to receive their humanitarian visa to go to the United States for three months. The article stated that they would most likely receive the humanitarian visa within the next few days, so I will keep you guys posted on that. At the time of filming this, there might be an update. Alejandra and Natalie could have already received their visa and are probably already in the United States, so if that did happen, I will update you guys right here. Alejandra made a statement and she said, imagine this, this is literally my second child that I'm going to have to bury. Like I mentioned at the start of the video, Anna did have a brother that passed away a few years ago, so 
this is Alejandra's second child that has died. Alejandra says that she cannot talk about Ana in the past. She always speaks of her as if she is still present and she says, my daughter is beautiful. My daughter is amazing. She'll never say my daughter was beautiful or my daughter was amazing because she just wants to continue to speak about her daughter as if she was still here. The family just felt like they were in the dark about what actually happened to Ana. So they actually were able to get some legal counsel with the help of the Pink Barrettes. They are a nonprofit advocacy group that supports women in uniform. Lucy, the chief operations officer for the organization, told Military.com that the family said Anna was being harassed by her superiors, which is why they reached out for advice and for guidance. Lucy told Military.com that she believes assault and harassment within the ranks are particularly rampant at Fort Hood and that accountability is not nearly in scale to the size of the base. She just feels like what happens at Fort Hood is very suspicious, especially because it's such a big base in the middle of nowhere. So she just wonders, you know, what actually happened in that base and what secrets do they have? She just says that a lot of things get swept under the rug and that it needs to stop. And as family made a statement through the organization and said, our family wants to ensure that women serving in the United States military can be safe and protected. The United States cannot be protected by soldiers that are victims of heinous crimes. The family is asking for support and a formal investigation into Ana's death. The family has also been holding marches back in their town in Mexico to raise awareness and just to let people know that they demand justice and that they're not going to forget about what happened to Ana. Alejandra has actually been leading these marches and she's been doing a lot of interviews with Telemundo and you know, with other news stations to let people know, hey, I'm here and I'm going to continue fighting for my daughter. During these marches, the family and the supporters have been shouting, no estamos todas, nos falta Ana Fernanda. No estamos todas, nos falta Vanessa Guillen, which means we all aren't here, we are missing Ana Fernanda. We all aren't here, we are missing Vanessa Guillen. The family says that Ana represents such a young warrior Mexican-American woman in the army. They say that all servers of our country must be safe and protected while in formation and that as a family, they just want to understand what actually happened to Ana. They are asking for the public support and there is a hashtag that you can use to spread awareness and help get the word out. You can use the hashtag Soy Ana Fernanda or hashtag Justice for Ana Fernanda. Anna was only 20 years old and the family is just so heartbroken by what happened. I know more information will be coming out in the future, so I will definitely keep you guys posted on what happens with the investigation. I truly hope that the military and the FBI continue with the investigation, that they do an honest and thorough investigation, and that the family receives the answers and closure that they're looking for. My thoughts and prayers go out to Anna's friends and family. I am so sorry that this happened to Anna. This shouldn't have have happened and like I said I truly hope that you all get justice and closure. It's just so disappointing that she was reporting this sexual harassment to her superiors, to her family, to her friends and yet nothing was done about this. I do want to end the video with a statement that Alejandra made that just completely shattered my heart. She said, I let my daughter go to that country alive. Now I'm going to that country to pick up my dead daughter. And with that, that is all I have on what happened to 20 year old Ana Fernanda Basaldua Ruiz. Like I said, I will keep you guys posted on any new movements and it would be amazing if you guys could share her photo, share her flyer, and just help keep the momentum going. Thank you guys again so much for being here and don't forget to check out the GoFundMe which will be linked down below. Let me know in the comments what other cases you guys would like me to cover and I will see you all in my next video. Bye guys!